In this screencast, I'm going to solve the mass and energy balance for a adiabatic batch reactor. It's a liquid phase reaction. We're given the initial temperatures 100 degrees C, the initial, and of course, constant volume. We start out with just A in the reactor. And then we have things like heat of reaction, heat capacity, reaction rate, in terms of concentration and the rate constant. And of course, the rate constant has an exponential temperature dependence. And the two questions we want to answer are, what is the reactor temperature when 60% of A is reacted? And then how long does it take to reach a conversion of 60%? So first I'm going to write the mass balance for a batch reactor and I'll do the balance on A. And so we have the change in the total number of moles of A, in A's total number of moles, respect to time, is equal to the rate of reaction of A times the volume. Now we can simplify this because it's liquid phase and constant volume. And so the number of moles of A is the concentration of A times the volume. The volume's constant. I can rewrite this in terms of concentration. I'm going to substitute in the rate expression here. And so we see the volume cancels out. We have the mass balance. We can likewise write the energy balance for this system. The energy balance now is the number of moles of A, heat capacity of A, plus the number of moles of B, heat capacity of B, because, of course, the number of moles of A and B are changing with time. Heat capacities are constant. This is equal to the rate of reaction of A times the volume, so this is the number of moles per time, times the heat of reaction per mole. Now I'm going to simplify this because the heat capacities of A and B are the same, so I can write this as the heat capacity of A. The right side I have the rate constant, the concentration, volume, and the heat of reaction. In A plus in B is just equal to number of moles of A initially. The reactor did not contain any B, so I can write this as Na0, the heat capacity of A and then this change in temperature with time. The right side hasn't changed. Now, number of moles of A is the volume of A times the initial concentration of A, which means the volume is going to drop out of this equation also. System doesn't depend on volume, so I'm going to cancel out the volume. So I can solve these two equations simultaneously and numerically, and I want to solve them numerically because k, which appears in both equations, is an exponential function of temperature. However, first, if I just want to determine the adiabatic temperatures, I can combine the two equations. What I can do is substitute into these equations, and I can substitute for this term here, so I can substitute dCA respect to time, and I'll get a linear relationship between concentration change and temperature change. Now I can basically cancel the dt and integrate. And when I do that, CA0 heat capacity are constant. So T minus T0 equals heat of reaction. CA at any given temperature, CA0. I know everything in this equation for 60% conversion. So 60% conversion means that CA now is 40% unreacted. So I can make this substitution and I can solve for T. So I've made the substitution. I've kept CA zero in here because we can see this also cancels. And I can solve for the temperature at 60% conversion, this temperature is 478 Kelvin, or the temperature is 205 degrees C. 
So the adiabatic temperature, of course, is independent of the type of reactor that we're looking at. If we want to get the time, however, we're now going to have to go back and solve these differential equations simultaneously. And the best way to do that is to solve them numerically. It's an initial value problem. At time equals zero, we know the concentration. We know the temperature. The program will then calculate the temperature the concentration, conversion, at any later time. Here are the equations that we will substitute into program that solves ordinary differential equations. These are in the format for polymath. We have the mass balance, energy balance, our initial time, and we just guess the final time and then ran it a few times to get a value close to 60% that we could then read off the exact value. The rate constant, important to remember, the temperature here is absolute temperature. So therefore, initial temperature 100 degrees C is 373K. And then we calculate conversion from the concentrations. Because it's a constant volume reaction, we can do this. And what we find is that the time is... 3904 seconds, or about 65 minutes, to reach a conversion of 60%, which corresponds then to a concentration of 2 moles per liter, and a temperature of 478, as we also determined. And this is a plot of conversion on the y-axis. So this is conversion versus time, showing we get to 60% conversion here, and it show how, shows how conversion changes as a function of time. So this is the output from the polymath program when we solve these ordinary differential equations.